Hey guys, this is Travis Hewer with Invictus Gymnastics, and we're going to talk about the kipping pull-up today, the six different parts that I broke it down into, and how that is important for you guys to learn how to do a butterfly pull-up. Let's get started. Step number one for getting up to the bar, the most important part in my opinion, is we are going to step up to the vertical plane of the bar, put our toes right there. And so the bar is slightly in front of us. We can look up and see it without having our head completely tipped over backward. And we also don't wanna be far back to where we jump up to the bar. We have to jump forward to get there because that's going to cause a forward and backward swing into the first pull up. Step number two is the lazy L bar mount. From that jump up that we just looked at, you guys are going to slightly lift your feet in front of you. It's a lazy L, like an L hang. So you just let your feet be kind of forward. They're going to point slightly in front of the bar um, and your knees are probably going to be pretty much lined up with the vertical plane of the bar. Okay, moving from the lazy L bar mount where your body was back behind the bar, when the body weight is back behind the bar, it's gonna slightly swing forward and then we're gonna create the loading position. A loading position is just to create a position that's ready to create power from, right? So what we're doing is we're getting a little bit of stretch in the front side of our body, not a lot. There's no reason to shove your head through or anything like that, but we're going to allow our chest to kind of lift up. We wanna keep our chin up, that way we don't push our head through and that will create this stretch in the front side of our body. Bend your knees slightly as necessary because what we're going to do next is drive the legs down and then swing them forward. I want you to think about if there were a beach ball in front of you, how far you would kick that across the room from this position. You wouldn't just snap into a beach ball, you would smoothly gain speed into the ball to kick it further and that's what we're going to do from the loading position. All right, now moving from that loading position with the legs back, we're gonna drive them down until our legs are straight. Once the legs are straight, we're gonna have the whole leg coming up until it meets the half toes to bar position. So I call this a kipping half toes to bar. I want you also to keep in mind that when your feet come up and through into this position, they shouldn't gradually stop. They should come up and stop immediately, okay? We want a lot of speed in the feet up until that point. It's going to make a big difference to what happens in uh, step five. But uh, in this position, what I want you to notice is that the shoulders are still completely extended. The shoulders should be extended because as your legs are coming through, they are building upward momentum. We are not going to hollow and start rolling the hips upward. We want the leg weight moving vertically as fast as possible, and that will assist with uh, all the next things to come. That's the kipping half toes to bar. Now that the feet came up and they stopped abruptly, it's going to create this hip extension. That hip extension is crazy important. And what I want you to know that that's really good to pay attention to when you're watching yourself doing these drills and movements is that the feet on the kipping half toes to bar and on the hip extension should be in the same airspace. If you do the hip extension and your feet drop, it means one, or both of these things. Either your legs were not moving fast enough into that half toes bar position and or you didn't stop them fast enough, okay? If they were moving really fast and then you gradually came to a stop, when you do the hip extension, your feet are going to drop. What we want from here, since the feet didn't move, is that the shoulders are going to get sent backward. They were down here, but now they are swinging upward. That's going to carry our upper body up. So at this point, we have effectively taken, taken leg swing to create hip lift, which in turn creates shoulder and upper body lift. And lastly, we have step six, the pull-up. I am aware that this pull-up isn't like the regular pull-ups that calisthenics people do or that you should do strict on the bar or even kipping pull-ups that a lot of people recommend that you do in the gym. What I'm trying to do is create the circumstance where you can learn a butterfly pull-up and this still counts in CrossFit. Your chin goes over the bar. So just to get that disclaimer out of the way, what we have effectively done up to this point is we created speed in the feet. The feet came through with the leg weight, creating momentum. 
The feet stopped, the hips extended. Because the hips extended, it sent the shoulders backward and upward. And now at this point, we are basically just riding out the fruits of our labor. You should not be pulling on the bar at this point. You're attached to the bar, so you just guide yourself into position. Keep the chin up. The chin higher than the bar is what creates the standard of finishing the pull-up. That is the rep line. If your chin goes over the rep line, that pull-up counts. So we're going to keep the chin up. We're gonna bring the elbows down at a 90 degree angle, and that is the completion of the pull-up. The feet should still be hovering in the same spot that they were at, at the kipping half toes to bar, all the way through the hip extension, finish the pull-up, the feet should still be floating in the same space. To connect these things, you're gonna just go backward from step six to step three. We're not gonna worry about jumping to the bar and doing the lazy L position, because that's how you jump from the floor into your kipping pull-ups. But as you come down from here, you're gonna go from this position into the hip extension, drop your hips into the half toes to bar, swing your legs back into the loading position. And as long as you are doing all of these items, the way as I just described, you are going to be able to keep rhythm. And instead of getting one, two, or three pull-ups that all feel slightly different, you're gonna feel consistency throughout all the pull-ups. The only difference about the kipping pull-up, as I am teaching it here in the butterfly pull-up, just so you know, is that once you finish this rep, you allow your body to start dropping. Then you pull your legs back and you are all the way back into step three, the loading position, ready to go for the next rep. So generally speaking, a kipping pull-up and a butterfly pull-up are the same movement, but the butterfly pull-up comes down preloaded. Thank you for watching, guys.